Hey, happy Friday. This week, Intel signed a deal to start making ARM-based chips. Nokia managed to get yet another phone brand banned here in Europe, and Asus proved that actually, gaming phones are still kind of fun. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, this week we start the brief with Vivo teasing its latest foldables, the Bookstyle Vivo X Fold 2 and the Clamshell Style X Flip that will both launch next week and both are looking pretty hot. Except for the bad news that we'll be talking about later. Next, Leica launched the $9,195 M11 monochrome camera, which is perfect for people who want to spend an absolute ton of money on being just way cooler than I will ever be. Then the first Android 14 beta just dropped this week, moving out of the developer preview, though the only new updates seem to be minor things like a back button that follows your system color schemes. Oh well. While we're at Google, they also reportedly started working on a Find My Device feature called the Pixel Power Off Finder. They'll be able to find Pixel devices when they are powered off, like Apple's Find My. It works by keeping a phone's Bluetooth chip active even when it is powered off or in battery saving mode, which I bet will make many privacy nerds very, very happy. Also this week, a new Windows 11 beta has finally changed what the print screen button does after 33 years. The button will now open the snipping tool by default rather than copying a screenshot to the clipboard, which I think makes sense. Snipping tool for life. And while we are at Microsoft, the company is apparently also experimenting with a Windows gaming handheld mode for Steam Deck-like devices to make Windows perform better on portable devices, for example, by having a joystick-optimized launcher for games. More details are TBD. Microsoft also had the brilliant idea this week to let anyone access Snapchat lenses from Teams, so we can all look forward to hordes of older colleagues around the world getting stuck as lawyer cats any day now. Just recently, we also talked about Acer launching their own e-bike, and this week we've learned that the brand has also announced a new e-scooter. Hilariously, it's called the Predator Extreme, which is kind of a big name for a very puny looking little scooter. Next up, the rumors keep on coming for a foldable Samsung Galaxy Z Tab being launched soon, which is apparently just around the corner, and I have to say, I'm actually kind of excited to see what a serious foldable tablet would look like. Then Nvidia also launched its RTX 4070 GPU series as its least expensive RTX 40 series offering, though at $600 it somehow still struggles with 4K gaming apparently. And talking of GPUs, Elon Musk also just bought 10,000 of these little buggers, and specifically the type that is actually used for training AI models, despite just having signed an open letter calling for an industry-wide hold on AI development. Hey, training AI is good when he does it, it's just bad when anyone else does it. Right? That makes sense. Also this week, Paris actually banned e-scooters, so we discuss whether other cities should follow suit or not on my podcast this week, together with other topics like Samsung mysteriously slowing down their wireless chargers and more. Links to the podcast are in the description. Okay, that's it for the brief, and for my first story of the week, we have to talk about Intel signing a big deal with ARM for its Intel Foundry services. Now, this isn't a story about Intel itself launching ARM-based chips just yet, but rather that ARM IP is officially going to come to Intel Foundry services. This means that Intel will be able to manufacture ARM-based chips on behalf of companies like Qualcomm or MediaTek, and whoever else uses ARM, with relative ease and with optimizations for power, performance, area, and cost across both design and production. And this is an important step for Intel maybe becoming a viable competitor to companies like TSMC and Samsung in the fabric industry. Now, the agreement specifies cooperation on Intel's 18A process, which Intel hopes to reach in 2024. And reminder that 18A actually means 18 angstroms, which is basically 1.8 nanometers, though those numbers are mostly just marketing speak these days anyway. Also, Intel still has to hit Intel 4 and Intel 20A first, so the 2024 deadline actually seems a bit optimistic maybe. But anyway, Intel's big claim is that they'll not only make ARM chips, but also x86 and and risk 5 chips as well, and they'll be able to combine those into single packages efficiently as well, so customers will be able to have the best of all three worlds in a single solution. Okay, and for my second story of the week, we have to talk about Nokia targeting yet another phone brand with its patent portfolio, and this time they actually got Vivo to stop their sales in Germany. 
What happened is that Vivo lost a patent lawsuit with Nokia, meaning that it now has to stop selling smartphones in the country. This is exactly like what Oppo and OnePlus went through, where both companies, along with their sub-brand Realme, quietly and rapidly pulled out of the country, halting online sales and removing handsets from official retailers and so on. Exactly the same in Germany is now expected to happen with Vivo, and of course the company is part of the same BBK group as Oppo and OnePlus, so seeing this ongoing disagreement about the same patent and therefore lawsuits wasn't exactly surprising. Vivo said in a statement that we have read with disappointment the decision of the District Court of Mannheim and have made preparations to suspend the sale and marketing of our products concerned through the official channels of Vivo Germany if necessary. We are preparing to appeal the decision and will review other options. Once again, Nokia is using its victory in the German market to pressure these brands to pay licenses on all or at least most of their phones globally and for a brand like Vivo that is actually pretty weak here, it's likely a better move to just give up the market completely rather than face global payments. I'm not a legal expert, so I won't give you too much of a legal opinion, but I have found some interesting facts. While Nokia has had success in Germany, it actually keeps losing in at least the one other market, which is Indonesia. And beside that, the ongoing situation between Nokia and Oppo has already become a quote epic dispute with countersuits from Oppo. The publication Foss Patents reports that while most patent fights in the tech industry are settled within about a year, this one is close to two years in the making and doesn't look settled yet. And it is the Unified Patent Court of Europe, which might be the next step for this fight to move on to, which would then cover not just Germany, but most of the EU as well. Okay, and for my third story of the week, we have to talk about the Asus ROG Phone 7. And I'm just very happy that this company at least has not run out of fun ideas for the gaming phone space yet, especially after others like Lenovo have just pulled out. My favorite idea is that the clip-on cooler now acts as a subwoofer to the phone to support the stereo speaker setup, which is something I'd love to try in person. Also, the phone actually opens up with this little slot when you put the cooler on, so it can actually suck air out from the inside of the phone. And then that slot actually closes back up again once you take it off, so the phone is still somewhat water resistant. Kinda cool. In terms of software, the ROG Phone 7 and 7 Ultimate will also use AI pattern recognition to automatically record your highlights of your wins and your big moments via something called X Capture, which seems fine, I guess. And in straight up questionable ideas, there is also now a new tool called X Sense, which will help the player with in game decision making by giving massive pop ups, apparently, that completely hide the game. Yeah, I bet that you want your phone maker to decide about those, not your game developer. And just for extra flavor, the actual copy seems grammatically incorrect as well. Nice. Anyway, the hardware is top-notch, obviously, with an improved vapor chamber, a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, a massive 6000 mAh dual-cell battery, and a 165Hz OLED screen from Samsung, and together, Asus claims that these specs will give them measurably better performance, heat management, and battery life than the competition overall. The 7 Ultimate with the extra screen on the back will start at €1,399, while the regular model starts from €999, and the good news is that Asus has confirmed that the ROG Phone 7 series will eventually be launched in the US as well. I'm just happy that gaming phones aren't dead overall. And while using phones to game is indeed fun, an even better way to spend your time on your phone is to learn something new while also having fun. And that's where Brilliant comes in. Brilliant is the online learning platform for STEM skills, which lets you learn math, science, computer science, and topics like logical thinking in a way that you'll actually enjoy and retain. It's like exercise, but for your brain. And if you always wanted to brush up on some long forgotten skill, or you wanted to pick up a new one, Brilliant lets you do just that in a really engaging way. You can choose a learning path that you're interested in, and then you can follow that from beginner to advanced levels, with each topic being broken down into smaller chunks. Chunks. There are interactive exercises attached to each of these lessons, so you actually get to practice everything that you learn right away, which is proven to help you more deeply understand the concepts that you learn and to retain your newfound knowledge. 
all learning material is put together by real experts, including those from Microsoft, Alphabet, and MIT, as well as a few of your favorite science YouTubers like Real Engineering, Sabine Hossenfelder, and Kurzgesagt. And they even cover really novel topics like quantum computing and machine learning. You can get a 30-day free trial at brilliant.org slash TFC, and the first 200 people who sign up using that link will also get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So check them out. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.